Hello and welcome to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Peggy Romero. I thank you for joining me for the podcast today. This week we've been talking about perception. Perception is the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses, or a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. That is to say, how we see something or someone. The thing is, our perception is often distorted or false, sometimes completely wrong. Our perception is usually, if not always, based on subjective reality. Remember, subjective reality is based on our personal opinions and our feelings, not on facts. So subjective reality is not based on facts. So subjective reality is not really the truth. So our perception of something or someone can be completely wrong and very often is. That's why our perceptions differ so much. This reminds me of uh, the way that we've like connected from speaking to each other face to face and then even talking to each other on the phone. People like to text. I guess it's quicker and sometimes a little bit easier. I always tell my kids and my friends, like, if you want to have a whole conversation with me, please call me. If you just need to tell me something really quick, fine. Hey, I'm going to be 10 minutes later or whatever. I'm happy to text. In fact, I am a texter for little brief conversations. I just don't like the long ones because they can get distorted and they're not always easily perceived accurately. So just this morning, my friend was texting me about a castle that she and her husband went to visit yesterday uh, near San Francisco. They're on a road trip up the Pacific coast and she doesn't want to talk on the phone while we're in the car. You know, they're just stuck in there, the two of them. So she thinks it's kind of rude. So she likes to text. I get it. In this situation, most likely, just talking about where they've been, nothing's going to be perceived any differently than what she intends, right? She's telling me about her trip, and I'm saying, oh, that sounds nice, you know, do you have any pictures? But what if you're texting when you're trying to express your feelings, and you can't hear the inference, or you don't know where the person's coming from? You can't hear the pronunciation or a certain word inflection, so you don't really know what it means, like hey, can you do me a favor? Or, hey, could you do me a favor? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of right now. It might not be that great of a thing, but you know what I'm saying because things get mixed up in text messages because they're complete, completely perceived differently than how they were intended. I can't be the only one that this happened to. It happens to me, not a lot, but plenty of times. So I know that you guys know what I mean. Emails, it happens like this too. But I think texting is even a little bit worse because uh, emails usually have a little bit more words in them. Anyways, here's another thought heavy on my mind about perception this week. I have a good friend. Um, she's just about a year, maybe a year and a half older than me. And speaking of perception, I'm 61 years old. So depending on how old you are and how you perceive age, you might think I'm really old or you might think I'm young. <laughs> At any rate, that's perception. She's 62, maybe 63. So to me, relatively young. Well, she just found out she has a big, big problem. Um, it is very likely a serious stage four esophageal cancer that's mastitized to her lungs and adrenals. Currently, she and her kids are just waiting to find the final confirmation prognosis. But if it's confirmed, I think anybody would perceive this as not very good news. Most patients with this diagnosis pass away within a year. Medium, median survival is like four to seven months. So if all of this is true and her life is coming to an end, how will she see it? What is her perception of her life and her death? I've known her for decades and I know she's had lots of good things and lots of bad in her life. You know, just like the rest of us, got to take the good with the bad. She has um, great kids that love her, and she has grandchildren that she's got to meet. And no, the kids won't be having any more kids, so that's like on the bright side. Unfortunately, her husband left her after being married for like 35 years, which has left her, unfortunately, rather bitter, like in the last seven years. So it's sad. And they say that bitterness and unresolved conflict might actually attribute, or I'm not sure if they say cause cancer, but I know that conflict and disruption inside is not good for you and that they say that it can cause cancer. So my only prayer is that she can find peace. So I went over and visited her for hours yesterday. I took her shopping. I brought her a present. I brought her a daily devotional. 
a journal so that she can write out her thoughts. And I bought her a book on forgiveness, like how to forgive things that aren't, you know, fair or something like that. I just want her to let go of all the hurt that she has in her life so that she can spend the last months that she has being happy and enjoying what she does have because she's got plenty of good stuff, but it's going to be all in how she perceives it. So I've tried to teach her the seven steps of stress mastery over the years, and she's just never been there. Um, you know, everybody's on their own journey. She knows me well, and she knows that I will always be available if she ever needs anything from me, like anything I would do for her. But I can't help but wonder, after visiting her for most of the day yesterday, what will she do with the time she has left? What is she going to do with the time that God's given her? I mean... Even if the doctors are incorrect and she lives another 20 years, the question still remains the same. We all have a choice. Will she remain a victim feeling sorry for herself that her husband left her for a younger woman? Or is she going to stand up and fight for herself? Will she begin to see her value and start working on herself every day and see this as a second chance? Or what? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've just been wondering about it. She could begin to let go of the hurt and the pain so that she can feel the love and the joy again and the peace no matter how much time she has left. And all of us only have one life. We can't afford to waste it. Let stuff go. Okay, so this reminds me of me. I just told you that I'm 61. My friends are all retiring now. They either recently have retired, they're talking about retirement because they're, you know, getting close to retiring, or they're still, you know, 55 and, you know, eight or 10 years away from retirement. I also ended my long-term relationship about a year and a half ago, I think. And I cannot believe how many married uh, friends that I have that are like, oh, if I ever got divorced at your age, you know, or if my husband dies, I'm never going to worry about meeting another guy. I don't want anyone to take care of her. You can't trust anyone anyways. Everybody's got baggage at our age and, you know, all this stuff. Whatever their perception is of meeting someone at our age. But you know what? I'm creating the life that I want. So they always say stuff like, why do you work so hard at restarting a new career? You're already fine, Peggy. Why do you have to work? Why can't you just relax? Or you look fine. Why do you feel like you have to work out so much? Or why do you go to bed so early all the time? Everybody else is up having fun. Sleep in later. Why do you stay on your diet that's never going to end? My perception, well, I can't be upset with them for how they see things. I mean, I choose to do what I want to do, and they're just asking why, and I'm the one who changed. So, yeah, I changed, and I'm so happy about the changes that I've made. I sold a successful business because I thought that if I sold that, that I wouldn't be stressed out anymore, which wasn't true, but I learned. <laughs> I changed. Um, I work with Bill Courtright because I believe in his mission, because I want to be an active part of creating a shift in the planet, because I think it's so important. And I've always helped people. I love to lift people up and give them a chance. You know, those who didn't uh, have enough self-esteem to get up off the floor alone and get their butts moving. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to give them a hand up. That's who I am. I love it. I wrote the book because I had it in my heart to write the book for like half my life, and I knew I was supposed to. So I wasn't going to be fulfilled until I did. So I did, and I intend to write another. I have so much to offer the world. I know that I'm not done yet. I may never be done because I have lots and lots of ideas. <laughs> but then I hear the other people's perception of a 60-year-old. Why can't enough be enough? Why can't you just relax? Eat, drink, and be merry. You've worked your whole life long, they say. You've earned it. And I suppose that's true. I've earned it, whatever that is. You're 60, Peggy. Why are you trying so hard to change? I mean, don't you see the good changes in me? Like, why wouldn't you not want me to change? Why would I not want to change? <laughs> they tell me, relax. People don't change at 60. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, let me tell you guys. I am an old dog and I've learned lots of new tricks. My perception of no longer working in a stressful environment 40 to 60 hours a week is that now I have time to learn and to do and to be all the things that I've always wanted to learn and to do and to be. I can work on what I want to work on. I love the freedom and flexibility that I have. I was a mom when I was 18 years old. So I've lived 
my life for other people, my whole life until now. And I can finally do whatever I want. Why would I want to sit around and do nothing when I have this opportunity? I don't ever want to sit around and do nothing. People's perception of freedom is different too, isn't it? I mean, I have the freedom to create my own reality. I have the freedom to think about whatever I want to think about, to do whatever I want to do. I have the freedom to discover my true self. And that's so important, important for me and important for you. So I'm a vitality purpose. My values are freedom, joy, peace, growth, and inspire. If I'm going to live out my purpose in life, shall I say the last third of my life, <laughs> I know I'm stretching it a little bit, but you know, no problem. I'm going to have to stay connected to my true self. I must align to my purpose and my values. In order to have freedom, I have to be willing to let go of attachments. Remember, attachments are all the wants. So, okay, joy is fulfillment, right? So if I'm stuck in the ego, red zone, and I won't be able to have joy because I'm going to be wanting to be happy. And remember, happiness is outside of yourself. And joy, true joy, is a state of being. So it comes from within. Peace is the same. As a value, it's completeness. So when you're in conflict, you don't have peace. Peace can come when you resolve your conflicts and that pendulum stops swinging and it just comes and rests. You can find peace. Connect to your now. Growth, also a value of mine. And knowing that my swing is stagnation has been so helpful because this one always sends me for a loop. When things aren't moving forward, you know, the, which is forward the way I want them to go, <laughs> then I start trying to control everything, red zone. So I have to work on steady growth and be patient and be neutral and be willing to change and to do things differently because things aren't always going to be moving forward as long as I'm working and keeping myself moving towards something, I need to find peace and happiness with that and just be, be still and wait and know that I'm on the right track. And then inspire, my last value, obviously. That's why I love to motivate other people and to help people and to keep them going. So yeah, vitality purpose is to raise the energy around me. And I can't do that by sitting around like my people down in my 55 and older place want me to. My perception is not aligned with the other people around me who are retired. I don't want to be retired. I never said I was going to retire. I just sold my business. I want a nice full life full of learning and fun and traveling and new experiences. And my perception is that life is fabulous. And I don't want to miss the blessing. And what a blessing that I have the opportunity to do anything I want. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, I guess I did work for that. To have this life of my dreams for the next 30 years, imagine all I can do if I get to do that. So if you ask me, why are you working out so much? Why are you always on a diet? Why do you always go to bed so early? It's because I know me, because I've spent the last few years getting to know what works for me. And it's worth it. It's worth my time. We all know how important sleep is. And I know I sleep really good until 2.30 or 3 a.m. And then I start waking up. It used to be six for years. Then it became five. Then for a while, it was four o'clock. Actually, for probably five or 10 years, I woke up at four o'clock. And here I am now. It's creeping down. I'm starting to wake up at 2.30 or three. Well, that's the middle of the night for me. I, I don't want to get up that early. So I lay there until four. And I usually do, do doze back on and off for a bit. But solid sleep is really good for me. So I go to bed early. I set my night all set up so that I can get the amount of sleep that I need so I can wake up refreshed because it's really important to me. I exercise because I know that muscle is the number one biomarker for health. And I also know that it decreases as we get older, you know, the more it goes down. And I want to be strong for the rest of my life. And yeah, I have to stay on my diet. I, I have it figured out after working on it for these last few years. And I'm not one of those people that says, oh, just go for a walk after dinner and you'll lose 20 pounds in three months. I mean, that doesn't work for me. I'm happy that it works for some people. I wish it were me, but it's not me. I know what works for me. I've done it. I've done it and then not done it and then done it and not done it. So I see it. I know it. My uh, blood work is better than it ever has been. And I want to keep it that way. So that means I need to do what I've been doing. And I know that some people have the perception 
that I'm boring. I mean, my sisters say that I act like an old lady because I go to bed early. They totally make fun of me. But that's not my perception. My perception is that I'm glad I know what I need to do. My perception is that I'm blessed, blessed with all that I've learned from Bill and from this podcast and from the Stress Mastery community, blessed that I can take this throughout the rest of my life wherever I go. I know how to feel good now. I mean, yay, I do feel good now. I used to feel terrible before. Everything hurt. The choice is mine. And you know, the choice is always yours too. I know what to do to feel good. And so if you keep track of your stuff, then you'll figure out what you need to do to feel good too, if you haven't already. And it's my decision if I keep doing this for the rest of my life. And if I don't, that's on me too. Oh my gosh, we could stop anytime and go back to how we were. But why would I ever do that? <laughs> I choose to live every day on purpose. Vitality is my purpose. I have to be healthy to live the life that I've meant to live. And freedom, my number one value, I have to have freedom. I'm not going to have any freedom if I'm sick, am I? So it doesn't make sense for me to stop. It makes sense for me to stay the course. Well, that's my perception anyways. <laughs> I hope that you guys got something out of this. And I hope that you've enjoyed the whole week on the podcast this week. I thought it was really great talking about perception. Remember, our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. And you can join us on that mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. You can find me at PeggyRomero.com. Other than that, that's all I've got. As always, until next time, stay inspired. <laughs>